the, the topic, uh, speech cognition formulation. Uh, it's a little bit using math, but uh, it's uh, kind of a, a important and fundamental math I want to introduce for this. Uh, that, uh, 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 today's uh, the uh, topic. In some sense, for me, uh, that today's kind of a basic math are uh, very important uh, uh, for us to understand the fundamental of speech, or I say general machine learning, but it is important for speech processing. So I kind of try to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the put a lot of remarks uh, of uh, formulation. By the way, not have a lot of masses, but there, there are some masses that uh, yeah, it's good for you guys to understand and uh, use it for your our problems. Uh, and the uh, this kind of uh, the, the, uh, the formulation is the applied to the both end-to-end -end speech recognition and the classical traditional Asian based uh, the speech recognition and so on. And uh, today is Wednesday, so we will also uh, release the weekly assignment too. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the get started. Uh, the speech recognition, we already uh, the discussed, you know, input is a waveform and the output is a text, right? And from now, uh, the, the, it's, there's some method that is uh, the accepting the waveform, but usually people are starting from the, the speech features, like uh, the, the, uh, someone may call the, the hard the MSCC and so on. So it's uh, the, some kind of spe uh, spectral feature. So usually we're starting from this one rather than the kind of waveform. So I kind of using this other feature extracted a representation, vector representation as a kind of starting point. But again, of course, we also have a lot of studies of the starting from waveform. And the, the, the important other problem in our formulation is to other the consider the conversion from speech features O to uh, the, the, the sequence, text sequence uh, W, and uh, how to formulate uh, this problem. It is quite simple. We just uh, try to uh, the model it as a, a posterior probability. Uh, suppose if we have this kind of posterior probability, speech recognition is easy. We just try to find the most uh, the, 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 uh, likely uh, word sequence. And then regarding it, that's a kind of a, a, a speech recognition result. So it uh, sounds simple, but anyway, speech recognition, starting from this kind of probabilistic uh, the decision theory, this is uh, the, the posterior and this is uh, the maximizing. So that's why we call it maximum posterior decision theory. So this is a starting point. Uh, well, we may have other decision theory and so on, but generally that, uh, we, that is good to enough to start from the map decision theory. And then uh, the, this uh, the, the, uh, the formulation uh, is uh, the more expanded uh, to see uh, what kind of a uh, PW given O uh, that we can prepare. Of course, this part is very difficult. Uh, this part is one of the kind of a major part of the speech, uh, the recognition part. Okay, so to uh, the understand how to kind of uh, deal with PW given O, Let's first uh, start a bit kind of introducing the mass notations. So uh, the, the, since the speech recognition are handling many variables, like some of them are scalar, some of them are vector, some of them are other matrix, some of them are sequence. So in this kind of uh, the, the, the slide, uh, I try to kind of unify it to using like, for example, a scalar for the normal, uh, the, the uh, lowercase font, uh, and the vector for the, uh, the border font. It can be kind of italic or non-italic, depending on the kind of uh, the, the cases, but basically the lowercase board and the, the uppercase board is matrix. I think that some of the machine learning uh, the lectures are also based on this kind of notations, so people may be familiar with that. And the, uh, I usually also try to kind of provide the domain. Uh, like for example, this means that uh, this vector O is D-dimensional, a uh, continuous vector. And the, uh, if uh, we uh, the, the, uh, uh, the specify the kind of uh, the matrix, this is kind of written by the D times D or D times uh, the N or uh, something like that. And we also have uh, another uh, the, the set, uh, which is the vocabulary. Uh, that is specifying the text and so uh, text uh, word and so on in the sequence, right? So basically, uh, the, this lecture we try to kind of specify the domain uh, as much as possible. 
Uh, again, speech recognition is kind of a handling from the continuous value to the, uh, the text. So it's uh, very important to uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the set the kind of domain uh, explicitly. And in the, uh, the set, uh, the vocabulary and so on, I usually using the, uh, this uh, the calligraphic font and also using the other uh, curly bracket uh, to uh, specify the set. Uh, so it's the set, it's not the sequence. Uh, the set and the sequence difference is that there is a order agnostic or not, right? And then the, the, uh, the sequence, I will try to use a kind of round bracket uh, the, as much as possible. Sometimes there might be some kind of inconsistency. But the, this is kind of uh, the, uh, the rule that I am uh, usually using. So the, 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 my suggestion uh, the, of uh, the representing sequence is like this. First, we can specify the element of the sequence with the domain. And then also the, uh, the, uh, the specifying the, uh, the, the length, uh, the, the, uh, the region uh, of the sequence. Uh, that is my recommendation. So important part is again, you know, uh, the specifying the domain and the specifying the length. This is very important to the deal with the sequence. And from now on, we have a lot of sequence, subsequence, and so on. So that, that please uh, that, 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 that remember this notation and do not miss the that, 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 that what we have that are working. And then given this kind of sequence, we also often use the, uh, the, the representation called subsequence, uh, which I will use the, this notation, sometimes always the, the lower or uppercase, uh, depending on some context, to kind of uh, unify the kind of our other, other equation. But basically, I will try to use the, the, the starting uh, of the uh, the, the index and the end of the index, and this means that the, the uh, this is a subsequence from here to here. Okay, uh, I think it's slightly different from Python, right? <laughs> the slicing way. But anyway, the, please uh, the, remember this kind of notation, subsequence. This is also very important. We often use the subsequence notation. Okay, now we kind of uh, the, the, uh, the introduce the, 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 uh, the sequence notations, and then Actually, I just mentioned that, you know, the input is uh, the, the speech feature O and the output is text W, which can be actually written in the sequence form. So for example, speech feature is D dimensional. Again, this depends on the kind of feature. If we're using MSCC, it's gonna be like a 12, 13 or 14. And if we're using the waveform, it can be of course one. <laughs> uh, and the other uh, lengths uh, that we have to specify. And the same for the other uh, text part, uh, we usually decompose the word or character, right? And then in this case, is uh, this uh, the vocabulary is a word vocabulary, and if it is a character, it becomes a character vocabulary. In this case, it's just the alphabet. And then that the, we also have our things uh, over the world uh, by using that we uh, the, the specifying the uh, the the, uh, the input and output uh, as a sequence. And please, uh, the good to remember this kind of notation. Uh, so that, that you cannot miss. The, from now on, we actually have a lot of other sequence, by the way, phoneme sequence, HMM state sequence, uh, the, the end of so on. So always, uh, the, I try to kind of provide this notation. So please are uh, familiar with this. Okay, and the uh, other notation, uh, the, uh, I prefer to use the operation with a non italic like a log, Ag, max, sigmoid, uh, and so on. If we type it in a lat latex command, if you're using that uh, backslash and so on. Uh, and the um, uh, index, like, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the W, uh, the T, uh, the uh, N and the T, it's kind of italic. But I also sometimes using the, uh, the, the non-italic uh, the script. This is to not the index. But showing that, like for example, this X is from the HMM or DNN or something like that, some kind of specifying the type and so on with some other uh, natural language or abbreviation of the natural language. I kind of using the non italic to avoid to confuse uh, the, 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 the index and the type. So this is also the rule that I kind of uh, consistently use in this kind of all the slides. So if you are not sure about it, uh, please always kind of check this slide. 
Okay, so these are kind of about the notations. Uh, and then I will uh, the move a little bit more for the math. But again, it's very simple math. So first, I want you guys to remember uh, these three rules. The third one is not rule, but the, a kind of uh, the included uh, rule. The, so first one is product rule. Uh, and the second one is sum rule. And the third one is conditional uh, independence assumption. I believe people know this one, but uh, I just want to make, maybe you guys can call it differently, but I just want to make sure that people know this one, uh, product rule. Do, do you know this? That everyone knows this one, right? Yeah, it's uh, kind of basic. And second one, some rule. It can be, by the way, uh, the, the, if it is discrete, it is summation, but if it, it is continuous, it can be integral. But anyway, uh, the people also know this one, right? It's in our lecture, we call it sum rule. So product rule, sum rule. And then another important one is that uh, uh, it's not actually rule, but it's actually the, the way to kind of make uh, some approximation, conditional independence assumptions. Like for example, in these cases, uh, the given Z, uh, why is not important to generating F, X? In this case, we can actually add uh, removing the Y. So these are kind of conditional independence assumption. By the way, this one and this one uh, is the equivalent. And uh, uh, the, it can be easily uh, the, the, uh, the, the proved, and this would be a one of the homework. But please remember that the, uh, usually uh, from now on, uh, our lecture is uh, that I try to only use these three uh, the the, uh, the the equations to kind of uh, make some high level formulation, and then we also have uh, several other rules. Like for example, someone may heard that uh, what is a Bayes rule? Bayes rule is actually derived uh, from the uh, the uh, the product rule here. It's actually if we move this one to this one. Uh, it becomes actually uh, the joint probability of px given uh, pxy. So it's actually Bayes rule of this part is uh, uh, derived from the product rule. And uh, from py is actually also the, uh, the, uh, the by combining the product rule and the sum rule, the denominator is uh, written by like this. So the many people may remember this one, this rule or this rule, but uh, frankly, I, I am I am not so genius, so I usually don't remember all the rules. But I just remember these three rules. And then they're the, the deriving, oh, what is base rule? No, 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 I know product rule. So I actually uh, the derive it. Yeah. So uh, same for a probabilistic chain rule. This is also very important, uh, uh, the, the factorization method. Uh, and this actually happens in, uh, a lot in the, the, the later in the how to deal with the sequence and so on. This one is also actually combining the product rule and the recursively providing the product rule. And then we actually pro, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the derive this one. So again, I don't usually remember uh, the uh, uh, chain rule. Just you know, or if I forget, I, I kind of uh, the, now starting from the product rule and then uh, deriving it by uh, the, by myself. So uh, the, this famous uh, the probabilistic rule is actually again from this three uh, uh, rule. And the, there are two exceptions that I use in my lecture. One is a beta B approximation, uh, which is a kind of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, appeared later, but I just kind of uh, the, the, the introduce now the, a little bit. That this summation is sometimes super difficult. So instead of taking the summation, we taking the mark. These are the, the, the many people call it differently, but in the speech people we call it beta uh, approximation. And the, also the last kind of approximation is probably many people are familiar with this pxy or you know px uh, the, the 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 px one or uh, py pxz. This is still kind of a just probability, abstract probability, right? We want to make it our actual problem. In this case, we, for example, setting the Gaussian distribution, gamma distribution, or neural network to kind of our other 
setting the actual distribution. This part is actually probably the, uh, the people are most caring about it uh, in these days. But uh, anyway, the, uh, the, the, uh, this part uh, and the beta approximation is a kind of a other approximation, but just kind of a play with the formulation. Uh, we're just using these three rules. And then with this, the, the, the three rules, uh, we can actually try to kind of uh, uh, do some formulation uh, of the speech recognition problem uh, from now. By the way, uh, the one kind of uh, discussion, uh, why we use the probability uh, to formulate this prob uh, problem? Um, there are a lot of reasons, and probably uh, there are many reasons to be correct, but uh, the, uh, the, is there someone that, uh, the, that have some kind of a thought or opinions or a comment about why uh, we use a probability to make some formulation for speech recognition? Is there someone kind of have some other thought? thought? I think that what you guys said usually, yes. So the are the things are not deterministic, right? So uh, the, the, the making it at the, 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 the distribution, the noisy channel, is quite make makes sense. Uh, any other kind of uh, comments or thought about why we use the probability? Again, probably the what you guys mentioned would be the always correct. Okay, so my thought actually that uh, the, the, yes, the, the, the things are the, the, uh, they're not deterministic, that is also true. Uh, first, for me, it is very intuitive. Probability is in intuitive. Zero means that, that, that nothing happens, right? The one means it's always happening. So this is kind of in intuitive. And also mathematically easy because it is bounded. By the way, uh, the, again, you know, uh, we do not have to use a probability. We can do everything in a continuous space and then just everything as a regression. We could probably make speech recognition, uh, but uh, the bounded uh, structure is actually good to nature so that uh, the, we actually uh, the often use this kind of uh, the representation. Uh, the, the, instead of the regression, bounded value is easy to uh, the, the predict and also easy to interpret. And the third one is easy to formulate. So uh, the, the especially, you know, uh, just a continuous value and the regression without constraint, uh, it is very difficult to set uh, what kind of a constraint we should do. But uh, the, uh, the probabilistic cases, we basically uh, the, the, the have our three formulation that I mentioned. By using this three formulation, we can actually make some kind of reasonable other uh, formulation uh, which is also intuitive and so on. So uh, the, from now on, I try to use the only product uh, the, and the sum rules and the conditional in independent assumption to uh, the, the, uh, formulate the speech equation problem. Of course, this is a high level formulation. After that, we need to kind of providing it as an actual function like a Gaussian a DNN and so on. That is a different part. But high level formulation, we just using this product sum and condition independence assumption uh, to uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the make our problem uh, to be formulated. So I will uh, the, the explain some of the example. So first one, uh, the end-to-end -end speech recognition. By the way, end-to-end -end speech recognition uh, the, is actually doesn't use so much about this kind of formulation. So mostly we just replacing this PWO as a kind of neural network function. Although uh, later I will explain a bit more uh, the detail. Usually we use a probabilistic chain rule to factorize the problem. But the, uh, the other uh, the, the formulation we basically don't use. Instead, we try to use a sophisticated neural network to solve the problem. And it was kind of nowadays uh, the quite kind of popular. And it's actually uh, the, the, thanks to the uh, other ones in the, the neural network, like attention, CTC, and so on. Uh, it is actually not so difficult as uh, it used to be. But uh, before that, uh, we actually uh, have a difficulty of directly solving this PW given law. So that we try to kind of using some kind of math to uh, make the problem uh, tractable. That is a kind of classical method based HMM, uh, the, the, the speech recognition. So I call the end-to-end -end speech recognition and HMM-based the, the speech recognition uh, as a kind of distinction. 
And the traditional method is, I again, I call it HM-based speech recognition. But it's actually having a lot of difference. Like the mostly HM-based speech recognition uh, is using a phoneme for end-to-end -end, uh, the, uh, the speech recognition doesn't use phoneme or something like that. There are several differences, but uh, just to, to simplify the kind of uh, naming, I just call the traditional method uh, HM-based speech recognition in this lecture. Okay, okay so, HM based uh, the, the speech recognition uh, is actually uh, the quite different. Uh, it's actually uh, the, the, uh, the decomposed problem uh, into the several component. Uh, feature extraction would be again probably same, similar. The speech recognition part can be uh, decomposed into three other uh, components. And I will explain this kind of a little bit more detail. So, first, uh, the, the, the problem from the, the speech features to uh, the text sequence was used to be uh, very difficult due to the kind of a small amount of data or uh, uh, the less powerful uh, the, the machine learning tools like uh, the, the, we didn't have a good neural network tools and so on. So instead of directly converting speech features to text, we actually try to put uh, some intermediate layer. That is funny. It's very kind of reasonable, right? When we also learn the kind of language, we also try to kind of first learn the kind of, uh, the, the, instead of uh, the, the uh, learn the, uh, the actual kind of surface uh, representation, we also check the kind of how it is pronunciated uh, based on the phoneme representation, right? And the initial speech recognition is actually highly using this kind of knowledge. And some of the methods are still uh, are using this phoneme-based approach. And then how to introduce the phoneme representation in the, this PW given law. As you can see, this one doesn't have actually any information uh, about uh, the phoneme sequence, right? And then, as I mentioned, we can use a three of three rules one of the three rules. First, we introduce the, uh, the phoneme sequence corresponding to the word sequence, which is you know, uh, the, the, not the, like a word vocabulary or character vocabulary. This is kind of uh, the, 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 the phoneme pronunciation uh, the, the vocabulary. And then this also has some own language, right? First, we kind of introduce this kind of phoneme sequence. And how to incorporate this to this other uh, the, the PW given O. And then we actually using uh, uh, this method. And uh, uh, can you uh, the make uh, today's first one, uh, the, uh, the short quiz? So first short quiz. From here to here, I use the, the, the one of the, uh, the rules. Uh, among the three, uh, and which one uh, do we use? Product rule, VW approximation, condition independence assumption, uh, the sum rule, this is not sub, sorry, sum rule. Uh, which one uh, do we use? That is a kind of question. Okay, so the, um, there are several uh, mistakes. The half of people actually made a mistake. Uh, the answer is some rule. So uh, from here to here, uh, we just introduce this kind of uh, the uh, phoneme sequence, and then taking the summation, uh, it goes to PW given O. This is a kind of typical sum rule. So please remember that if you try to kind of include additional uh, the, the, the sequence of value, variable, how to do that mathematically? We're just using the sum rule, okay? Next line. This is also second question. <laughs> Can you open this one kind of? Same question, but from the second line to third line, uh, the, which rule uh, that we should use? It's actually a little bit complicated, but it's actually one of them. Just one of them. The answer is product rule. We're just only using the product rule and then derive this one. Uh, 
And then actually the arg max is about W. So uh, the, the denominator, we usually can uh, uh, remove it, right? And then last one uh, is also a question. Yeah, can you add that? From the third line to fourth line, uh, the, uh, which one uh, we used? This one and this one is same. This one and this one is same. This one and this one is different, right? And uh, what rule we use? Many people uh, the, did the correct answer. Yeah, this is conditional independence assumption. Um, three rules to uh, the factorize uh, the three distribution, uh, one distribution to the three distribution. So this kind of our, uh, the, the procedure is uh, the very important. Uh, by doing that, we can actually make the program uh, the, the, the modularized and the factorized and the tractable. So please remember uh, this uh, the, the, the high level uh, operation. Even in the neural network era, uh, the, this kind of way of thinking is very important. And this uh, the, the method uh, it's uh, the also the called the noisy channel model. Noisy means a kind of distribution. Uh, the, the, instead of uh, the, the directly solving this one, we uh, consider that both O and W is a kind of distribution. And then finally, uh, the presenting these three distributions. And this one, uh, the first one is called the acoustic model. And the second one is called the lexicon. And the third one is uh, language model. It can be n-gram or h, uh, the, and the acoustic model can be HMM. But now that uh, most of them are actually replaced with a neural model, uh, and so on. And by the way, uh, this uh, the method is uh, not only applied to speech recognition. Many of the sequence to sequence models we actually using it. So actually, machine translation also using the same formulation. So originally. Uh, the, the speech recognition and the machine translation people are kind of are, are the same uh, the group and actually creating the, uh, the, 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 the using the same methodology to uh, realize the speech recognition and the machine translation in the beginning of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the speech and the, uh, the, the NLP uh, the research error uh, in 1970s uh, or uh, 80s. Okay, so uh, the, this is a kind of a three factorization now. So uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the acoustic modeling, lexicon language modeling is actually converting the speech features to phoneme sequence and the lexicon to uh, the converting the word sequence. And then finally language model to define the kind of output. And this is uh, the, the, uh, the originally I used the O and the W and just starting from PW given O. But by using the, uh, the, the, uh, the product rule, sum rule, and the conditional independence assumption, we can factorize this problem. And this, each of the distribution are uh, corresponding to the kind of uh, problem that, uh, that we want to solve. So this methodology uh, is uh, very important. First, uh, the factor, very good question. This is more like an assumption or approximation. We thought that this is a very good approximation and we use it. However, uh, the, it is a very good question. Yeah, I think I should mention it. Uh, the P the, uh, the, uh, the, yes, the, the observation, speech features could be mostly depending on the phoneme, but uh, it can also be depending on the kind of a word context and so on, right? So this actually, uh, the, the conditional independence assumption is just a, one of the approximations. It's not very bad, right? It's reasonable. So we often uh, make it. By the way, if we don't use the conditional independence assumption, this problem is uh, the, from uh, the here to here, it's equivalent, right? Mathematically, this one and this one is completely equivalent. And actually, difficulty also uh, is equivalent. <laughs> solving this one and solving this one is uh, the, uh, the almost same. However, by setting the conditional independence assumption, again, it's not very bad, right? The speech features are the only depending on the, the, the phoneme. It is not bad. So by using this kind of assumption, we can make this uh, the problem to be uh, more kind of tractable. So condition where and how we use the conditional independence assumption is very important. 
And then later, we will use it for the HMM or CTC or n-gram and so on. OK, so yes, the, this is actually exactly the, this part. Uh, the conditional independence assumption is actually, I would say, that the more like our kind of assumption, modeling, approximation part. Uh, so it is not unique. Uh, that it is most on, uh, the, mostly based on our kind of sense uh, to uh, make it. But by using this kind of uh, the, the methodology, we can actually make the problem uh, tractable. So that is a kind of uh, the way we kind of develop for the classical HM based data speech recognition. Okay, so now I kind of explain about each of the block, uh, the more kind of a little bit uh, detail, but it's still shallow. Uh, the following lectures are uh, the explain, for example, one of the lectures that are discussing the feature extraction, and uh, many of the lectures uh, they are discussing about, about acoustic modeling, uh, language modeling, and so on. But today I will give you some overview of what the, the, each of the modules are doing. Uh, first, uh, the feature extraction part, that is a kind of the, the beginning of the, our kind of uh, the process. Uh, this is actually uh, the, the mostly uh, the, the, the based on the uh, signal processing method, like a male frequency uh, capture coefficient uh, and other kind of other method uh, the, uh, and so on. And the other uh, time scale is uh, very different. Waveform is actually very kind of uh, the, the, the fine resolution of signal, right? It's the, the 16 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz is that the waveform that we usually use, which means that, that uh, one second is represented by the 48,000 uh, the seconds, right? Uh, that our 16 kilohertz that we usually use, this is very kind of a small at a time scale, but the feature extraction is converting it to more like a, uh, the, 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 uh, still kind of a bit of it smaller, but at a tractable uh, the time scale, like a 10 millisecond and so on. That is a kind of important because that the many of the phoneme uh, and so on is changing this time scale. And then that the converting the kind of one dimensional uh, the signal uh, to the other uh, 12 to 40 uh, dimensional vector. Uh, that is a kind of other uh, speech other uh, feature. There are a lot of kind of uh, the, the property of how to kind of convert and so on, which I will explain in a lecture for. But anyway, this is you know, similar to the other machine learning problem. Just a fast data front end processing to converting the, the low signal to the, the, the features that we are kind of easy to track, uh, the, uh, the deal with. And the second part, uh, now we kind of converting the, this time domain waveform to the, uh, the vector of the sequence. And then acoustic modeling is converting the kind of this feature to the uh, possible phoneme sequence. So this part is actually one of the most important part in speech recognition. Most kind of other uh, performance comes from this other uh, component. And then here, people are using the HMM and the Gaussian mixture model, or later people started to use the HMM and the deep neural network and so on. So this lecture tried to cover the, uh, the traditional one to the, uh, the, the latest one. So we will cover the GMM and the, uh, the DNN, uh, both formulations uh, and so on. And then the, the, it's actually uh, the, the, uh, the converting the, uh, the, uh, the time frame, uh, the, uh, the, the features to the other uh, phoneme sequence. So it actually has a big jump. So before that, it is you know, uh, the, the equal at uh, the 10 millisecond uh, the, the, the signal. But the phoneme, it can be actually changing the duration depending on the kind of uh, the, uh, the phoneme type or context. So it actually becomes the, the symbolic uh, the sequence. Uh, from the kind of a physical other uh, sequence. So this uh, part is actually one of the other uh, big changes uh, in the, the, the speech uh, processing. And basically, uh, they are not converting one by one, all kind of probabilistic. This means that they are the, they are the, this acoustic modeling providing the phoneme sequence with some probability or some likelihood score. And then data processing, taking this kind of uh, uh, the, the, a soft decision, and then uh, further kind of enrich this kind of uh, other hypothesis. So this is a kind of acoustic modeling part. And then third part is a uh, lexicon part. And this part is actually not so much probabilistic. Mostly people are just using the other uh, the one-to-one or one-to-many uh, mapping. Well, some, some languages, many-to-many -many, uh, mapping. But uh, the phoneme, from phoneme to, uh, we convert it to the kind of a word sequence. 
And basically, uh, what do, how to do that? We basically use the, list, uh, the, the linguistic resource dictionary, and then uh, the converting it. Or again, you know, sometimes one too many or many too many. A little bit complicated, but English cases mostly it's not so difficult. And they, uh, but to make this kind of things, of course, we need a pronunciation uh, dictionary, right? So that is a kind of a, a, the, the resource we have to use. So if we uh, the, the, uh, the apply this method to the low resource languages where we might not have so much rich pronunciation dictionary, it can be an issue. And the, uh, I can skip this part. Uh, and uh, maybe I can also skip this part. Uh. OK, so the, uh, the pronunciation uh, dictionary, uh, the, actually one of the most famous uh, pronunciation dictionary that is used for speech recognition is CMU dictionary. It's actually developed and maintained here. Uh, the, the professor Alex Rudniki is still maintaining it. <laughs> if you have some issues in the, uh, the CMU dictionary, you can actually send an email to him and then he can deal with it. <laughs> so uh, the, today I actually uh, want you guys to the, the play with, uh, not today, the, the, as a kind of weekly assignment, uh, I want you guys to play with a little bit about it. But maybe I can uh, the, the play that with that. This is a CMU dictionary. Uh, the, there are a lot of uh, core cool interface and so on, but basically the uh, if you the type the some uh, the, these are web interface. Uh, if we type the some kind of uh, the word and then uh, the CMU dictionary providing the other uh, phoneme uh, sequences, and the yeah uh, CMU. Okay, CMU is converted to CMU. Okay, cool. And uh, next, let's type Watanabe, my name. Do you think it is included in CME dictionary? Watanabe. It's actually included. <laughs> Watanabe is very kind of common name in Japanese. So that's why probably uh, it is included. OK, let's test my name. First name, Shinji, S-H-I-N-J-I. Do you think it is included? <laughs> you guys are, have a good guess. Not in dictionary. My name is not included. So I may ask Alex Rudniki to you know, include it. <laughs> and actually, uh, the, this, uh, the, the many uh, the vocabularies are covered, but some of the vocabularies are not covered. Like, uh, the, what kind of uh, the vocabularies, uh, what kind of word uh, do you guys imagine that is not included? Because very kind of complicated one is not definitely included, but even common, very popular word uh, is sometimes not included. Slang. Slang, like yeah, that's may not to be included or may be included. Uh, the, uh, the, the, my kind of uh, the, the, the the good example is COVID-19. Of course, it is not included. Why? It is too new. Yeah. <laughs> of course, if we, you know, the frequently update and dictionary, it's going to be included. But a new word, basically, it's not easy to uh, update. If someone very frequently updated, uh, it is included. But if not, it is. I used to use the the uh, the, the, uh, the word Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin also is not included, but Bitcoin we can easily you know guess the kind of our pronunciation, right? So, uh, the, but the, the, this is a kind of our issue in the dictionary based approaches. If it is not included, we cannot get the kind of a, uh, the, the lexicon. So we need some kind of our ways to solve this one. And uh, there is some kind of advancement like a grapheme to phoneme. Uh, the, the, uh, the toolkit to providing such kind of uh, the pronunciation and so on. But basically, uh, the, the, uh, other than that, we actually the highly relying on the, uh, the dictionary, whether it is CMU dictionary or other language, a dictionary resource in the language and so on. So this is a kind of lexicon part. And in my lecture, lexicon is not included in the detail. So it's, it is a kind of everything about it. Very good question. 
actually some of the tools are providing the pronunciation based on the context. So uh, the, for example, actually uh, the, uh, yes, that, that it also happened, often happened in the, the, the English, but other languages, this is uh, that, that happened everywhere. Uh, I know my language, Japanese, <laughs> which is actually uh, the, uh, the quite uh, the, the, the contextually, uh, first that each of the character has a two to three pronunciations always. And this pronunciation is changing depending on the kind of a context. So the, like uh, the, you said, read and read, it's depending on the context, right? But the Japanese cases, it's all, almost always, all the character it happens. So actually how to do that? We actually, uh, instead of, we have some dictionary, but how to get this kind of pronunciation, we usually using a machine learning tools, like a, uh, the CRF or deep neural network, and the, the, the throwing the entire text, and then getting the context, and then providing the kind of a best kind of a pronunciation and word boundary and so on. So the, the, uh, the, some of the tools actually require such kind of context. But uh, this, uh, the, 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 uh, the English cases just have, uh, for example, multiple pronunciation. And given the multiple pronunciation, uh, we just kind of providing the uh, several kind of candidate uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the corresponding word. And then uh, this can be uh, the data uh, the, the, with a language model to be discord and then uh, the, the, the get the final result. So the basically uh, the dictionary based approach is mostly working in English especially. Okay, in the last part language modeling, which I also try to kind of make it quickly. So language model is now at a very popular famous, right? PW and uh, the using the autoregressive transformer or whatever uh, to kind of a, uh, the produce the kind of uh, the, the probability uh, the and so on. So this uh, the, the language modeling is actually originally often studied in the speech recognition and the machine translation. Actually, I, I did not expect that now, you know, language model itself becomes super popular. <laughs> so it used to be the language model is mostly uh, the supporting the some of the kind of uh, the, the sequence uh, the, uh, the, uh, generation program especially in the speech equation, the machine translation. So it, the, the, the language model in the speech equation context is also kind of supporting to kind of providing the more kind of a, uh, the, uh, the natural uh, language uh, variations. And the, nowadays, again, it's be mostly based on the neural, but the, the, the more kind of intuitive way is that uh, people are also using the count. And then it is very natural that, for example, go to can be uh, this kind of a three are uh, the uh, the, uh, the the phrases, but uh, I actually checked this the thirty seven thousand of the Wall Street Journal uh, the sentences, and then I found that the go to appeared fifty one times in this kind of a corpus, and the other go to and go to uh, the do you guess how many times it appeared? Actually, it's zero. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't appear. So it's very natural, right? Because this is a you know common phrase. So this means that the, uh, the it's nowadays now again it's neural, but the uh, the more intuitively it used to be people are using count base. But anyway, the language modeling is try to kind of providing the most likely uh, the, 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 uh, the word kind of uh, the sequence, given the kind of this kind of three pattern. So acoustic modeling provided and lexicon providing totally three kind of this kind of candidate. And then if we're using a language model, we can select go to, right? This is very natural. However, it is not the everything. Actually, this uh, the zero is a very kind of a difficult problem because zero means that, uh, that it becomes zero probability. So I say that it doesn't appear in the, the, uh, the, the in 37,000 of sentences. But if we including this one to the 6 million, actually the, uh, the, the, it will be different. Go to still kind of a, a, a quite often happens, 2000, uh, the, uh, uh, two, more than 2000 times. And the go to actually appeared two times. Okay, yeah, there's one example here. Go, go to, it's, yeah, it's not a very natural sentence, but it's not actually that happened. So we should not, set a zero probability at least. We should provide some probability, right? So 
So this is a kind of uh, the difficulty of the language model. This is actually 41 times this appeared. And uh, most of the cases go too far. <laughs> this uh, the, the phrase appeared uh, for, uh, the mostly. And then it, again, the, the previously it was zero. Uh, but the, uh, uh, if we have our kind of our, uh, the more patterns, uh, more kind of samples, we actually have our, uh, the lots of the, uh, at least not zero uh, probability. So this means that we have to providing uh, some probability, not just you know taking the uh, the most likely one, but they, they at least are providing some probability. Otherwise, the this uh, the sentence uh, does not appear. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of uh, the speech function again. That each of the component I will uh, the, 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 uh, explain a bit more uh, the one by one uh, in the following lecture. But we have a feature extraction, acoustic modeling, lexical language modeling, and each is uh, the, the method is based on the different kind of uh, the computational method. So used to be it was very difficult to build a speech cognition, uh, but nowadays it actually becomes the end-to-end -end, uh, speech cognition. So in our kind of lecture, again, I will also the explain about some part in the classical, which is still important to understand our speech problem. But the mostly, we are also working on the other the teaching the I'm also mostly teaching the uh, end to end uh, the speech question part that is also very kind of exciting uh, by following the uh, recent trend in the, uh, the, the uh, deep neural network.